Hello Hustlers! And welcome back to the IBA Hustle channel. IBA Hustle provides education for freelancers and independent contractors. IBA Hustle can help you with things from startup to expansion and beyond. We'll give you tips on setting goals, doing research, planning, money management, and more. If this is the kind of information you find helpful, please hit the like button to let us know and help us out so we can continue to produce this kind of content to help hustlers like you. We also invite you to subscribe and tap the bell icon to be notified when we upload new content. And definitely share it on your social media to help get the messages out to others seeking the information we provide. In today's economy, you should remember, I've a hustle, do you? Then act on it. This is day 9 of our special 30-day freelance business money mindset challenge. In this episode, we'll discuss the three common limiting beliefs about money. Your ability to earn and keep more of your own money may be hampered by three pervasive money restricting presumptions. Let's examine these three frequently occurring restricting attitudes regarding money so that you may determine whether you even remotely possess them and then take appropriate action to resolve the situation. Number one. Money is a scarce resource. This is something that your parents, as well as your school and society, have been teaching you since you were a little child. There is a presumption that the amount of money is finite. This means people are trained to possess a lack mentality. But in reality, money is not finite. Thinking about money in today's society is more so now since money is merely a creation of your mind and is not backed by the gold standard. Since COVID when needed, the government can simply print more money. Think about it. When a bank issues a loan, it produces new money from nothing. The bank may now lend you $80 of the $100 you deposit in savings, and remember you still have your $100 that you can spend if you want to. They will be paid interest, which brings in money for the bank. Thus, the bank creates the $80 in interest out of nothing. This is only possible because we have the ability to print more money to pay for it without having to back it with gold. Consider organizations that manage payments. Here's another example of how they generate money out of thin air. When you use PayPal to make a transaction, keep in mind that Amazon pays PayPal a fee. No matter how many people use PayPal, there aren't many more fees now that the technology has been built, so this price is arbitrary. Number 2. All evil comes from money. We have been told throughout our entire lives that money is the root of all evil. You see it through its depictions in popular literature, books, movies, and educational institutions. Rich people are sometimes viewed as selfish, if not malicious, persons who solely care about their own interests while depriving others of those same benefits. Many equate this misquotation with the Bible verse when they think or speak of money. The original Bible text states that the desire for money is the source of all evil. And while popular fiction loves to show us that trope time and time again, it's that reinforcement that leads to most people having a lack mentality. The truth is that there are probably several instances that would show that greed for money is not the root of evil. Money is actually only a tool, it is a fact. We trade money for things like material belongings or particular kinds of mental and spiritual experiences in the state that our planet is in right now. It's how we pay for necessities like a roof over our heads, food in our stomachs, and healthcare, things that are truly essential. As a result, we give the idea of money enormous significance. Because if you don't have enough money to handle basic expenses, everything could appear hopeless and horrible. The lack mentality equates being broke, or the state of not having enough money to pay for basic essentials, with the type of person you are. Society deems broke people as bad people. In many cases it's this condemnation that creates a self-fulfilling realty for people, making them feel bad and thus they act accordingly. It starts out in small ways, like robbing Peter to pay Paul as the saying goes. Rather than learn to manage your money better you just spend and spend and spend until it's no more and you are left with nothing before the months out. Again, this society enforced lack mentality causes people to become depressed and desperate and makes them commit bad behavior just to hold off the shame of anyone finding out they're broke. Now these people are internalizing this mindset and think of themselves as bad. The truth is that you aren't a bad person. If you have no money, you won't degenerate. This is a lack mentality if you think of yourself as bad or feel depressed because you're not wealthy. Right now. Think of money like a river, it ebbs and flows. Sometimes, when it rains it overflows and rages causing floods and other times it can wreck you due to low or no rain and it starts to disappear. The trick with having money is to not spend it when you receive rain and do damage by flooding, overspending and maxing out credit cards. 
or go into hoarder mode when the rain starts drying up or your river is getting smaller. But if you go about money the right way, you may use it to greatly enhance both your life and the lives of those around you. It is not doable. Learning about money and finance helps you to balance your spending, so you are still amassing wealth during the drought times by creating a type of dam. This is your emergency money reserve. Number 3. Being materialistic is selfish. Many people think that people are greedy and evil because they want more money. Some of the problems with freelance service providers and product pricing are greatly influenced by this mentality. Whether you ever feel that you're asking for too much or too little and dislike your clients, find out if you believe the limiting belief that having a lot of money is selfish. There's that lack mentality rearing its ugly head again. Having a lot of money doesn't make you instantly bad. The money is not self-serving. Right now, we live in a world where money rules. We use it to cover all expenses, including a roof, food, medical care, and education. Even attending church involves some money outlay because you need to find a way to get there, dress suitably, and you might even be asked to join and make a financial contribution to a church. The reality is that cash is only a tool. It's only if you use it improperly that it may make you seem like a bad person. However, it's the person, not the money, who makes them that way. But keep in mind that receiving payment for your services or goods is not undesirable, it's business. Whether you work for yourself and perform a service or you are an employee for someone else, it is usually expected and acceptable to get paid for your work. Believe it or not there was a time when volunteers were paid to perform the tasks they do. It was a stipend to help pay for their time and cost of get to and from the work site. But suddenly it became perfectly acceptable to have people performing tasks and giving up their time for free. If it makes you chuckle, consider the things that aggravate you about it and make an effort to accept that this is the way things are right now. But no one ever went into working, whether for themselves or someone else, to constantly not be paid. Yes, they may be gaining experience but they're also going to be homeless without income to sustain the basics of living. The bottom line is that we swap something for cash, which we then use to exchange other things. If you use the tool properly, it will make your life happy and fulfilled. Okay that's all for this episode. We look forward to you joining us daily for the next 30 days and learn how to improve your money EQ. But if you don't want to wait the full 30 days visit our Gum Road page and download your copy of the IVA Hustle 30 Day Freelance Business Money Mindset Challenge. Do you want to learn more about how you can get your freelance business off the ground? Head on over to the IVA Hustle on Gum Road and grab yourself the IVA Hustle Freelance Business Startup Kit. The IVA Hustle Freelance Business Startup Kit will teach you how to gain the freedom and flexibility of being your own boss and create a life you'll love. You can also grab a copy of the IVA Hustle Big Book of Freelancing from Amazon. It's full of startup ideas, including instructions to start freelancing quickly using the skills you already have. You'll find the 27 top side gigs for today's markets inside, along with step-by-step -step instructions for getting up and running fast with your business. IVA Hustle is here to help you increase your freelance gig income. For more information about IVA Hustle visit us at ivihustle.com or click the link in the description below. Again, if you've found the information helpful, please hit the like button, it lets us know what kind of content to produce to help hustlers like you. While you're doing that, please share this video to help others learn more about being an expert freelancer. This way you'll be able to show yourself as someone who knows how to find the facts and substantiate their expertise. We invite you to subscribe and tap the bell icon to be notified when we upload new content. Please visit the IBA Hustles Gum Road page for ebooks, merch, and reports. Thanks for watching and be sure to check out our other videos. Follow us on social media. Until tomorrow hustlers.